BBNC's mission statement is enriching our native way of life, and that means different things to different people. We're, we're living in a different world than we were 50 years ago. I've been on, on both sides of an issue, and, and it's hard. There's opportunities that come and go, but um, there is going to be a population that will always be here. Responsible development is it's, it's really critical. We need to develop the people that are going to be leaders in the community for the next generation. I think the land to me personally is very important because it's like our, our treasure. Growing up in the region, being a subsistence user, commercial fishing, but I didn't know all of the intricacies of managing land. If it isn't managed and understood responsibly, then we're not going to ultimately have this resource to enjoy and, and use. For some of us who are pretty young back then, uh, we were still pretty much connected to life in the village. And some of our native leaders came around and started talking about, well, we need to do something concerning our land. ANCSA helped to develop that concept that all of a sudden, you know, corporately as uh, natives within the villages, we need to realize that uh, in order to protect our land, it, it has to have some sort of a title. Well, I think ANGSA was a tool that was really created. It was a very unique economic uh, idea. The Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act created uh, corporation status in a way to have uh, indigenous people utilize their own land base. One of the things I think it did was um, made people proud of who they were. Um, I, I, I'm of the generation that, that we grew up, um, many of the kids grew up not knowing you know, kind of who they were. The land claims kind of unified people in, in a fashion. We have a long-standing policy that if we do develop anything, it would be to protect, um, you know, our right as the natives to continue to hunt and fish within the lands, even around some of the development. Grew up in Dillingham, subsistence, hunting and fishing. You know, the emphasis often is about educating your children and family in the ways of subsistence. I think it's as important to educate people in terms of how to manage and take care of their land so that it becomes a way of life and a way of thinking that's passed on. It's one of the skills or one of the um, ideas I'm teaching my uh, foremen or my workers that uh, we want to let them know that uh, the opportunity to, you know, do more work to help the community is always present. I think we should be proud of the fact that, you know, we've, uh, we've, we know what's on our land, we know where people are and how they use the land. I was a commercial fisherman for over 40 years. I now live in Anchorage, but I, I still do a lot of subsistence here. During the summer, I come home every year to um, cut up fish. I think subsistence is number one in Bristol Bay. Bristol Bay Native Corporation has roughly three million acres of land, mainly subsurface estate land, um, but it doesn't appear anywhere on our balance sheet. The economic value of that land is, is challenging to describe. The land can be valued if it's ultimately developed. Uh, it can be valued if it's held in some conservation status. But the true value of the land is through its traditional use. It's the ownership aspect of the natives of Bristol Bay and ultimately what the land can provide uh, for future generations. You know, some areas within the region lend itself better for conservation use, but then other lands lend itself better to the development. It's come a little bit more um, interesting and, and exciting actually to, to try to find that sweet spot because now we find communities that really want to be more pro-development minded than others. Land use policy is, is about preserving the traditional use ways 
as well as the balanced, uh, responsible development. We could draw a lot of parallels with the direction that we're moving in and with the direction that BBNC is moving. With the wind turbines, I mean, and alternative energy as a whole, it's kind of a, a, a pilot project for the region, but the resource that we have, I mean, the wind out here, we're, we're I think, one of two places in the state that have this high of a classification of wind. We reduce the risk of pollution. We're not hauling as much fuel across the water here. If we are not responsible in the development of the area, then either A, we lose control of that development or we make our resources disappear. Sometimes you're between a rock and a hard place on some of the issues, but uh, I think being responsible and and protecting the resources are very critical to people, and it is to the board. We need infrastructure, we need economic development in Bristol Bay, and we help provide that by developing our lands in a way that is right uh, for us and for our shareholders. But at the same time, um, we feel that there are certain projects that, shouldn't, that just shouldn't be developed. Um, they're either too big, they don't meet our, our risk tolerance, or they may ultimately not benefit the region or, or, its, or its residents or, sh or our shareholders or the harms that could come from this project are, are in our opinion, too severe. Uh, there, there, there may be irreparable harm done to the region if certain projects are developed. That's how we've behaved in almost 40 years. From a regional corporation's perspective, as the subsurface landowner, we have an obligation to de develop our subsurface but not at the expense of the traditional way of life and the traditional use of the land and the subsistence waste. Through the years, I've seen a lot of changes uh, from a slow-paced native village lifestyle to where we as uh, corporate leaders within Bristol Bay have, have had to adapt uh, to a lot of little bit faster-paced uh, business style life as we develop with anything within uh, our region. I think uh, our shareholders have uh, always directed the board and, and our land policies that we have in place, I think, reflect the direction that they've given us that uh, we would be careful that we don't infringe on any of our, our, our style of living that was, you know, pre anxa Many other uh, non-native corporations, Western corporations, Fortune 500 companies, um, I'm not sure that, that their end goal is to be around in perpetuity. Our time horizon is much different than, than a non-native corporation. Um, we've been in business for almost 40 years and it's in our timeline just a blink of the eye. We intend to be around forever if we can. So the, the, the ideals behind BBNC, the philosophy, the, the mission, the values that we hold true, um, we think of what BBNC might be in a hundred years or a thousand years. And in order to to sustain ourselves, we have to understand that the assets of the corporation aren't going to be used up and given away or doled out in a matter of 40 years. They're going to be held forever. And we have to treat them that way. We have to protect them that way and think of not just um, ourselves as individual shareholders, but our children and our grandchildren and those that will come after us and make sure that there's something left there that they can benefit from. Mm -hmm.